God be with you. Why did Sigismund burn down Scalets and then come here too? That's war for you, lad. Certain lords have resolved to take things into their own hands and eliminate anyone who doesn't share their view. Unfortunately, Sir Radzig is one of those. And what's more, he was sitting on a pile of silver that could help King Wenceslas's allies. What happened in Gutenberg? Gutenberg? Well, I'm just a simple soldier, but the good lord gave me ears, and I've heard some things from Sir Divish and from those who fled from Sigismund's pillaging. Were there many? Indeed, but it was the Kutenberg mercenaries who came to see me, because I knew them from before. I see. Listen, lad, these are all games of the high aristocracy. In Prague, a cabal of nobles rebelled against King Wenceslas, wealthy aristocrats who took against our king for reasons of their own. There's no doubt Sigismund had his fingers in the whole affair, him and Wenceslas's cousin, Jobst. And that cabal helped him abduct the king. So then why did Sigismund attack Kuttenberg? Why do you think? I suppose because it has a strategic position and good fortifications, so it can be used as a base for raids, giving you control of the whole territory and good defences too, if, if you need them. <laughs> Not at all. King Charles, may God grant him eternal glory, built Prague into a proper royal city while King Wenceslas took a liking to Kutenberg. After Prague, it's the most important city in Bohemia, in the entire Holy Roman Empire. He who commands the Kutenberg silver is king. So Kutenberg sided with Wenceslas because he favored it. Now you're starting to understand. When Sigismund imprisoned Wenceslas and took control of Prague, the people of Kutenberg began to raise an army against him. So with the attack on Kutenberg, Sigismund killed two birds with one stone. He defeated Wenceslas's most powerful allies before they could stand against him and also gained immense wealth. Where did these Cumans come from, anyway? I don't know much about them, only what the Chamberlain said. That they came to Hungary from the east and settled there. They're godless barbarians and merciless fighters. The nobles used to say the Hungarian king shouldn't enlist them, because they dishonor our rules of warfare. But when there's power and money to be had, it seems that honor isn't worth my spit. And believe me, it's always about power and money. So, Robard, I need to get to Scalitz. What would you do there, lad? Sigismund might have left, but the place will be swamped with robber barons, brigands, deserters, and other vermin. And anyway, your lord commanded you to stay here. Sir Robard, my parents died there. I can't leave them to be eaten by dogs. What would you do in my place? Sorry, lad, but I won't take orders. You'll have to wait until everything settles down and maybe your lord will change his mind. Jesus Christ be praised. I need to get out of here. And I need a feather bed with a comely wench in it. But it looks like we'll both be disappointed. Sir Divish gave orders not to open the gate, and you especially are not to be let out. My mother and father were left in scallops like carrion. I have to bury them. I can't leave them to the dogs. I'm sorry, my friend, but I can't. You'll have to persuade Sir Robard, or think something up so I don't end up in the shit for it. Otherwise, forget it. What am I supposed to think up? 
How should I know? Maybe some disguise so I could say I didn't recognize you? If a Townberg soldier turns up all kitted out properly, in armor and a helmet, then of course I let him go. That's obvious. All right, I'll have a look around for something. Take care now. My respects to you. I need to get out of here. Then I'm afraid you're out of luck. Ah, I see. All right, then. But if you breathe a word about me to anyone, may the Lord watch over you. Crawling out from under some rock. Ah! You 
you'll get what for. Curse it. Mr. Biasai made the best to you. In the end, you were a hero. You didn't run away. You didn't abandon me, like me. supposed to be you, Bianca. I'll find the bastards that did this to you. I'll find them. I swear it. Just wait a moment. I'll take care of my family, and then I'll come back for you. I won't leave you. Why did he do it to me, Father? Why? Why did you leave me? Forgive me. Forgive me for everything. Next time I won't run. I'll never run away again. I'll find the one who did this to you. I remember. 
over his face. I'll find him. First, I have to find the shovel and, and take care of you. I remember you told me you wanted to lie beside Mother. Here. Under the linden tree. At least I can do that much for you. Get away, you mutt! Get away, you beast! What's going on? Vishak, what in God's name are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Digging turnips? The beast just went for me! Isn't that mutt the butcher's? Mutt. Isn't that body the butcher's? Yeah, that's him. What's that got to do with anything? Seems to me that dog knows exactly why he's going for you. You're picking dead men's pockets. What do you care what I'm doing here? What are you doing here? I asked what you're doing here. How about you give me an answer? If I want to confess, I'll go to the priest. Go away and leave me in peace. I've interrupted you robbing the dead. Is that why you're so ill-tempered? You bastard. Haven't you got a shred of honor? And what of it? The butcher has no more need of corn. And now that I think of it, your sword would do me quite nicely as well. Will you hand it over without a fuss, or do you want to end up like the butcher here? The only way you'll touch this sword is when I shove it in your guts. Well, that's all you ever Easy, my boy. Your good master won't be leaving this one.
Damn it all. How am I going to do this? Do you need some help? Can't you see the sword? Who are you? What do you want? Spishek? Who do you think we are? Franciscan brothers. <laughs> We're to rob you of everything you've got. Especially that fine blade that's of no use to a peasant like you anyway. Banish the thought. It is my father's sword. You mean him? I don't think he's going to be needing it anymore. Listen here, boy. You hand over that sword. I might just let you go. If not, you're in for a family reunion you really don't want. Leave me alone. Kill him, runt! I cut the bastard down. As you like. Could have just cost you a few teeth. Ah! Fucking come on then! Chief is going to like it. It's new, isn't it? And now, for the maiden bloodletting. Surely your father never would have imagined it would be your blood. I believe there's a word for such moments. The old man would certainly know. But I'm just a common. Did you help make it? No doubt you did. Such miserable luck. To die by the sword you helped forge. Hey, go fuckers! <laughs> the games are over.
kit nem látok. Megjött a mulatság. Mutasd már valamit. Mi van? Csak nem fájt. some help. Wake up, Henry. It's past sunrise. Henry, can you hear me? Get up, Henry. Wake up. It's a new day. Henry, can you hear me? Hallelujah. I thought you'd never wake. Were you having a nightmare? Uh, Teresa? Hmm. I still have a fever. Uncle won't be pleased, but you'll have to stay in bed. Where am I? In Scalitz? We're at my uncle's mill in Retay. I didn't know where else to go. What happened? You don't remember anything? I suppose that's not surprising. I found you in Scalitz after those bandits attacked you. I thought they'd done for you, but you were still breathing. Why in heaven's name did you go back there? It was madness. They slaughtered everyone who didn't run. My parents, I... I wanted to bury them. I had to... Don't worry. I took care of it. Thank you. Any good Christian would have done the same. Now sleep. You need your strength back. You're awake. Good morning. <laughs> it's near midnight. You've slept all day. Oh. <coughs> oh, I feel like a horse fell on me. The beating you took was worse. But at least the fever's broken. What in the world were you doing in Scalitz? Waiting to die. What? They killed my brothers. My family. My friends. They're all dead. All of them. Everyone I ever loved. They killed one of my brothers in the mines. After that, what did I have to live for? Don't say that. There's always hope. No, there isn't. But it doesn't matter. I'm a different person now. How did you manage to save me? You were lucky. I was in Scalitz and I saw Zbyshek and his thugs. I tried to distract them, but it would have been no use if those soldiers from Tamburg hadn't arrived. They were searching for you and scattered the bandits. Searching for me? Yes. Lord Divish sent them, led by Captain Robard. So tell me, why is a lord of such high standing interested in a blacksmith? So Divish promised Sir Radzik he'd look after me. But as for why they should care, I've no idea. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm not surprised. I'll bring you water and something to eat. In the meantime, rest. You're still very weak. Good 
Good morning to you. How's the invalid today? Ugh, I haven't felt as good as this since they lashed me to the wheel and quartered me on the town square. Got your sense of humour back. You must be better. My uncle will be glad to hear it. I had a job persuading him to let me bring you here. If you'd lain around much longer, he really would have dumped you on the town square. You can stay until you find somewhere else to live, but my uncle will want payment for taking you in and caring for you. And this is your uncle's house? We're in Rete Mill. My uncle's Miller Peshek. He took me in, and I talked him into taking care of you too. I've been lying here long enough. Uncle will be pleased he's one mouth less to feed. But are you truly well enough? Well enough to do what has to be done. Where can I find Sir Radzig? He's in Lower Castle in Perkstein. He's a guest of Sir Hannes of Leiper. But someone like you can't just walk up bold as you please and demand an audience. I know Sir Radzig. And I didn't bring him his sword as I was supposed to. I must see him. If you insist. But you need to speak to my uncle first. You've been in your sick bed for over a fortnight while he paid the apothecary to tend to you, and for medicine. That's a good deal of a coin you owe him. I've been lying here two weeks. My God. Better a fortnight in bed than an eternity in the grave. If it weren't for my uncle, you wouldn't be here at all. I owe you both my life. And I'll repay my debt. You have my word. All right. But before you go to town, you should eat something. You're still weak. There's food on the table for you.
My name's Henry. Thank you for taking care of me here. My name's Peshek, and I'm the miller here. You've already met my niece, Teresa. She took care of you for two whole weeks while you were in limbo. And talking of you being at death's door, while you were lying here, you worked up quite a bill with the blood letter. Who came now and again to keep you alive with his potions? That quack doesn't come cheap. I paid him what I could, but I still, that is, you still owe him. I see. Well, it's better to be in debt than to lie dead in a ditch. What do I owe? I'm not afraid of hard work. You won't pay for that shoveling manure. I might have a better job for you. And it's not something any fool can do. If you prove to me you're a clever lad, I might trust you with something you could really make money from. What do you say? Well, what would you need from me? A trifle. Just to take something from someone and bring it to someone else. And not get caught while you're doing it. That sounds straightforward enough. Except for not get caught. Why would anyone want to catch me? Oh, don't worry. It's just a job like any other. Only this one requires, uh, let's say, the right moral disposition. Do corpses bother you? No honourable man should touch them. That's the executioner's job. Did you expect I'd give you a hoe and send you out to the fields? You can dig all right, but somewhere else. I want to know whether you're going to hide behind some stupid fucking scruples, or if you might be useful for more unconventional work. I was prepared for just about anything, but that's a bit much. But go on. Tell me more. Listen, it's about this ring my mate, Wojciech, the Kohelnitz Miller, had his eye on. Trouble is, they buried the ring by the gibbet, along with the villain they hung while he was wearing it. Jesus Christ. You want me to dig up a corpse, take a ring from it, and give it to your friend in Kohelnitz? There's nothing sacred to you. Money first, morals later. That fellow is dead. He won't miss it. Whatever bleeding heart came up with the idea that it's disrespectful to disturb a corpse never read the Bible. It's still a human body, only it's missing a soul. Why be disgusted by something created by God? I think I've already heard more than I need to know. You've got the tongue of the devil himself. If you tried hard enough, I bet you could justify sodomy with a goat. Watch your mouth, boy. There's a shovel here around the mill somewhere. If there's any problem, come and see me. And here's something on the side to make you dig better. Thanks. I'll need it. I can't believe I've come to this. Digging up corpses. Oh, and uh, watch out for the executioner and his hounds. They're pretty savage. And I don't just mean the dogs. You can just throw them some meat. The dogs, that is. But the executioner? Well, don't vex him. Good luck to you. This is a bit awkward, but recently you buried a convict, and um, this convict, um... was a family man. He left three young children, and I thought it might ease their hearts if I gave them the ring their father had on him in his final hour. I'm sure you wouldn't bury him with such a valuable thing. Children, you say? You're right, I do have the ring. But actually, it's a worthless bauble. You can have it for a few groschen.
Thanks, but I'm not interested. Why don't you make your bloody mind up what you want? Miller Peshek sent me. He's very sorry, but by mistake, he didn't give you the full weight of flour last time. He says you should come and get the balance. That rogue. How much is it? Half a sack. That's nothing to sneeze at. It certainly isn't. I'll go there right away. What? This is nothing but an ordinary copper band. It's not worth a tin penny. Henry, I'm so glad to see you. What's that dog you have here? He looks familiar. Don't you remember him? It's Mart, the butcher's dog from Scalitz. Ah, of course. When I went back to bury my parents, he was guarding his master's dead body. A faithful dog. How come he's here? When we carted you here, we took Mutt along too. He's been hanging around the mill ever since. How's he doing? A lot better now. I slipped him something good now and again when Uncle wasn't looking. He won't starve to death then. Does he obey you? Me? <laughs> not much. He's got a mind of his own, and I'm just not strict enough. Ah, spoilt then. No. He just hasn't learned many commands, but he's well able to beg for a piece of meat. How long has he been with you? More or less since we came here. He runs off now and again, but he always comes back. Sometimes I don't see him all day. I think he likes to go wandering. What does the miller have to say about it? He can't stand him. How's that? Every time he sees him, he starts shouting that he's a useless mouth to feed and that'll skin him. Jesus. And it didn't even soften his heart when Mutt brought a hare from the woods. He was happy to eat it, but it didn't change his mind. I could have a word with him. Mm, that would be a waste of time. So he's doing quite well then? 
Yeah. I'd keep him, but he reminds me too much of Tinker, you know? I don't want to think about Scarlet. So I thought maybe you might take him with you? Me? I'm sure the two of you would get on great. He's a handsome fella and lovable. I'd be very happy if you had him. But we never had a dog at the smithy. We never needed one. Come on. He's got no one. Ah, uh, all right. I'll take him. He can keep me company on my travels. Thanks, Henry. Go and get him, then. He's sniffing around somewhere here. What are you up to? How would you like to, um, I don't know, uh, come for a walk? A walk? I'd like that very much, but I can't right now, Hal. Give me some time to settle in, will you? If that's what you want. It's not you, Hal. It's just this isn't a good time. Hey, Mutt. Remember me? From Scalix, remember? You wanna go with me? Come on then, we'll get on like a house on fire. Follow me. To heal, Mutt. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. <coughs> That's a good boy. That's my boy. God be with you. I'll have that ring for you. Good. Nice to know you're the sort of lad I can trust with a job like that. Now run with the ring to Wojtek, the Miller and Kohelnitz. He'll have some work for you. And I'll have something for you soon, too. A clever fellow like you will never want for work. At the very least, I'll buy risky goods from you. I mean, the kind that used to belong to someone else and you can't sell to just anyone. You'll buy stolen goods from me. Oh, thanks for your trust. I'm sure that'll come in useful. Would you teach me something about the, uh, milling craft? Like how to get things out of strangers' purses into your own? Aye, why not? You're handy enough. No doubt you'll master it. Come behind the mill where we won't be seen. 
good luck then. I'll stand here and pretend I don't know you're there. You try sneaking up behind me without me seeing you and take something from my purse. First, you have to rummage in the purse. The longer you do it, the better chance you have of finding something valuable, but also of getting caught in the act. Once you've found something you want, you've got to pull it out carefully, but fast enough so I don't notice. Try stealing my dagger. It's there, mixed up with other things. What in God's name is he up to? That's the way. I hardly noticed you were there. I think you're ready to try it out for real. Best practice on drunks and sleeping folk so you don't end up in jail before you even get started. Thanks, Pashek. You're welcome. But I'll be having that dagger back now. Here you're able to open locks without a key. Will you teach me how? Certainly. I'd like to practice the basics. All right, but it'll cost you. Isn't that quite a lot? Are we agreed? You're a right pinch purse. Sorry, but I'm not going to teach you for that price. Can you tell me something about the other millers? There's a couple of other fellows around here in my trade. Wojtek in Kohelnitz and Simon in Sasa. Tell me about Wojtek. He's young and hot-blooded with a short temper. But he's a fine fellow when you get to know him. His heart's in the right place and he's always willing to lend a helping hand. Unfortunately, he got himself into a feud with that usurer. 
the merchant Wolfram Pruder. A slimy bastard he is. And now they're sworn enemies. What about this Simon in Sassau? An odd one he is. A loner who don't talk much. But he's as dogged as a hunting hound once he gets his teeth into anything. He won't let go until he sees it through, even if he has to walk over dead bodies. Tell me something about yourself. There's nothing much to tell. I was born at the mill, I live here, and I'll surely die here. But before I do, I've plenty of work to do, and I hope I live to see peace in this land again. Can you tell me... What do you think about everything that's happened? I don't concern myself with the doings of my betters. But this mess isn't good for business. Them two brothers should sort things out between themselves without dragging us into it. I don't give a damn who's king, but that usurper from Hungary has gone too far. Do you know anything about those Cumans? The heathen scum that Sigismund brought here. Why do you even ask? You've seen with your own two eyes what they're capable of. What about the Scalitz folk? God sent them to punish us for our sins. They don't work, they just idle around begging. And you want to keep a close eye on your belongings when they're around. I'll be glad to see the back of them. <laughs>